then breaks down. Then the spindle is formed. The spindle that occurs at the extreme end of the cell occurs. Then the bivalents are arranged along the spindle of the equator. In the anaphase one, the homologous chromosomes repel each other. They move away from each other. They move to the opposite poles. Then they split into two haploid sets of chromosomes in the daughter cell. So they split. By the time they move away from each other, they split into two haploid sets of chromosomes in the daughter cell. Normally, what we have at the end of the day is the diploid set, but they first move to the haploid or the singular set of chromosomes. Then in the telophase 1, that's the last stage of the first mitotic stage, the haploid number of chromosomes gather at the end of the spindle. Then the cell constricts at the middle, just like it did in telophase of mitosis, it constricts at the middle, like it wants to divide. There is a constriction, it bends at the middle, so they can easily separate. Then it divides as a mitosis, so it can divide into two. We have a circle that is constricting at the middle, both at the top and below. Before you know it, it divides. Then the daughter cells goes into interface. And I said interface is the resting stage. Then by the time it goes into the resting stage, it prepares for the next division. So in the interface too now, there is no further DNA replication. No further DNA replication. It's just what has occurred in the first one that is continuing. Then in the prophase 2 now, the first stage of the second mitotic division, the chromatins also shorten and thicken. Then the centrioles replicate itself. You have the new spindle apparatus formed. Then the centrioles move to opposite poles. They move to opposite poles. Nucleus divide into two new cells. The nucleus divides into two new cells. Then the chromosome are present as two chromatids. The chromosomes are present as two chromatids. Then chromosomes arrange themselves at the equator of the spindle. Then the nuclear materials are attached to the spindle fibers. In anaphase 2, the centromeres divide, then the chromatids separate, they move away from each other to opposite poles. The chromatids become chromosomes of the daughter cells. In the telophase, the chromosome uncoils and becomes distinct. The spindle fiber disintegrates, the nucleoli reappear, then the central replicates itself. The nuclear membrane formed around each, formed around each group of daughter chromosome form four haploid nuclei, that is four haploid nucleus now, but the plural of nucleus is nuclei. Then the, cyto the cytoplasm constricts at the middle. You know, we have two cells after the first meiotic division. But by the time we get the, the two each cell, the two cells also now constrict at the middle. So we, we now have four cells now. By the time the constriction occurs, each cell constricts at the center. You have four haploid nuclei. Then the cytoplasm also constricts at the middle, forming four gametes. Then cells go into interface, that is, they go into resting cell. They don't perform any other division. Now, the life examples of meiosis, how can we relate to it? It is found in the formation of ovum in the ovaries of the female. Egg formation that occurs in female organism. That's a process that makes it available. Also, the formation of spans in the testes of the male. Meiosis brings that about. Another thing is the production of pollen grains in the answer of flowers. That's a male gamete also in flowers and in plants. What are the importance of meiosis? Meiosis ensures constancy of diploid number after fertilization. You know, at the end of the meiotic division, you have four haploid number, and I said really, the, each organism has a diploid number of cells, has a diploid number of cells. So how, do, how does the four haploid number become diploid? 
And if you look at the life examples of meiosis, you discover that they are in reproductive organs, in the ovaries, the testes, and the rest. So by the time the haploid number from the ovary meets the haploid number of the sperm now, they become two. So that's how diploid number is formed. Then another importance is that the child's matter causes a new combination of maternal and paternal genes in the gametes, leading to genetic variability. It's not like in the mitosis that is the same parent, just a single parent, and it's contrived, then you have the same thing. In meiosis, there is a change, a combination of paternal and maternal genes that come together. So you have the variability, not the same all through. You have little differences, even though the organism or the new cell has characteristics from the paternal and the maternal, maternal genes. So there is a, it's not the same. So the new cell is not only maternal and it's not only paternal, but it's, it's ex exhibiting the genes of the two, the two parents. So there is a, a kind of a slight change. There is a slight change. So somebody will say, I, I don't know who I look like, mommy or my daddy and my mommy together. So that's what happens. You don't really look totally like the mother cell, like the mother or the father. So it's a combination of the two. So you have genetic variability. Then fertilization brings about further combination of genes. So you can have further combination of genes from the paternal and the maternal, maternal side. Then meiosis causes restoration of diploid number of chromosomes. I said that earlier that since you have haploid number at the end, but by the time fertilization occurs, there is diploid number of chromosome restored. Now, want to talk about the differences between mitosis and meiosis. What difference? They are both cell, cell division or nuclear division, cell division processes. But what differences occur in them? In mitosis, replication division conserves diploid number of chromosome. While in meiosis, it's a reduction division and it results in haploid number of chromosome. In mitosis, you have diploid number. Why in meiosis? In mitosis, you have diploid number. Why in meiosis, you have haploid number of chromosomes? Then mitosis takes place as one set of division process. It's just one process in mitosis, just prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But in mitos meiosis, you have two sets the first mitotic division and the Beg your pardon, the first meiotic division and the second meiotic division. So you have two stages in meiosis. Why is it just only one in mitosis? Then in mitosis, you have two identical daughter cells being produced. Two cells. At the end of mitosis, you have just two cells. Why at the end of meiosis, you have four non identical daughter cells? At the end of meiosis, you have four non-identical daughter cells. While in mitosis, you have two identical daughter cells. So the daughter cells are identical because they are from the same parent. But in meiosis, there is a paternal and maternal genetic combination. So there are four non-identical daughter cells that you have. Also, the difference sees between mitosis and meiosis. We have Mitosis occurring in the growth of somatic cell, of somatic cell or the body cell, body cell generally, you have mitosis occurring like healing of wounds, repair of worn out tissue, tissue of the body that you just see that is changing. That's where mitosis occur. But in meiosis, meiosis occur in germ cells, that is reproductive cell. That's where you have, find meiosis occurring in reproductive cells. Then in mitosis, there is no crossover of genes, but in meiosis, you have gene crossover. Then in mitosis, there is no exchange of chromatic materials at any stage. Chromatic materials don't exchange, but in meiosis, you have it. There is exchange of chromatic materials. 
Then in mitosis, there is no formation of bivalence, while chromosome form bivalence in meiosis. Offspring of the mitotic division is an exact replica of the parents. Offspring of mitotic division is an exact replica of the parents, while in my meiosis, the offspring shows variation among themselves and their parents. Said they are four non-identical daughter cells, but in mitosis, they are two identical daughter cells. So the offspring of meiotic mel uh, division show variations among themselves, that is among the daughter cells, then the parents. But in mitosis, is the same replica. They are, the offspring is the same replica of the parent cell. So once we see the similarities between mitosis and meiosis, one, in both divisions, the nuclear membrane disintegrates. Then also, the chromosomes align themselves at the equator of the cell in both divisions. Then the, both processes of mitosis and meiosis involve formation of the spindle apparatus. Then the, both processes result in production of daughter cells, even though the daughter cells are different. Mitosis produces just two daughter cells, meiosis produces four daughter cells, but both processes result in the production of daughter cells.